peaches are coming. So we got a couple peaches, not a huge peach here, but we got some. And you can just give them a bit of a squeeze, see how hard they are, just a soft squeeze. As soon as you feel any give, you can go ahead and pull them out. This right here is what the walking onions will do. So they'll put on the heads and then they'll fall and they'll literally walk across your land over the years, spreading out planted free onions for you. And here's the strawberries. So leaping across, putting their runners out, coming from the strawberry patch. And you don't have to do anything. So I haven't done anything to these. And if you look, it's actually started to root. So you don't have to do a thing. They'll root right through wood chips. If you want, you can go ahead and bury them a little bit, plant them in, but you don't gotta. You don't need to at all. They'll just hop across your land, get a good runnering variety that puts on decent sized fruit. Prioritize that over getting a very, very good fruit variety that puts on a little bit of runners. Same time, same patch, same area. We've got sea buckthorn here. And you can see what sea buckthorn will do. Underground, it'll send a long runner and it'll pop up. So this is all from the same tree. Patch there. Patch here. Here. So this is how they spread. So this is how you have to be careful where you put them. Put them in an area where you'll mow around them so that they can't get out. So here's the algae in the pond. I'll show you the rest of the pond's pretty clear. It tends to gather right in and around here in the stream areas, which I actually kind of like because it's easy to pick up. And it's free compost and nutrient. And we'll see if that gets worse or better um, over the years. But the idea is that the more plants I have that are not algae, they'll take the nutrient out instead of the algae. So they just have to get bigger for now. If you were kind of a new pond owner, I would say that this probably would be a 9 out of 10 on the shocking scale. You probably wouldn't be prepared for it, but I think it's important to show it that this is kind of what you can expect to deal with. And I'll pull this out, that much algae, probably every 3 or 4 days. Maybe, maybe more to the 4 days. I'll pull that out, and then I just compost with it, so you'll see it kind of around some of my favorite plants like the sea berry you'll see some older algae from before and it'll just turn into turn into soil so it's free chop and drop it's free soil nutrient and this is how i'm going to build the life content up of the plantings in and around the pond so we'll turn a problem into a solution that's the thing gotta remember that always 
When you have a problem, find a way to turn it into a solution. And here's the pond proper, so nice and clear. You can see right to the bottom, you can see the fish. Having fun in there. They gobble up quite a bit of the algae. You can see them all day just kind of poking their heads in there, eating bugs that are living inside of it. And the water quality is fantastic. So already I would say I'm a very, very happy customer and probably only going to get more so as the vegetation picks up, turns this. I really want it to look like this is inside of a forest. So I really, that's why I have the trees planted. I'd like to plant lots more trees maybe next year, slowly add to them. I'd like it to look like this is hidden inside of a forest and you kind of discover it. I gotta say, I feel a bit like a kid at a trailer park going around and finding frogs. I have found it very enjoyable. It's funny, they just... They love it. Two of them right there. You see the other guy? It's a pretty nice spot. Now this kind of film on the rocks, this is something that people might be uh, tempted to try to pull out, but it's actually a filter as well. That's actually cleaning the water too. So as long as you don't hate, hate, hate the way it looks, I think it kind of naturalizes it a bit. I'll take the algae strings out, you know, some of this clumping, nastier looking stuff. But as far as the slime on the rock, that's like biofilm and it's actually very, very beneficial. So we want to try to leave that. So here is a pawpaw at the top and I gave it a companion parsley. So we're going to let the parsley go to seed here and then we'll collect the parsley seed and spread it. Um, parsley is a great plant to just try to naturalize it on your land. It looks a little weedy, especially in this phase when it goes to seed, but it's a very, very valuable plant. So we'll, we'll spread that in places where, you know, maybe my wife won't hate so much that it looks like a bit of a weed, air quotes weed, it's parsley. So pond plants are doing pretty well. We've got some beets growing. So they're coming. Just beets right in the beets right in the pond plant. So this is a good sign of you've got a tomato hornworm. So I picked three of them off this plant. This is what you'll see. This plant was totally fine a day before it got smoked. So we'll still get some tomatoes off of it, but it, it like it doesn't hurt the tomatoes itself. It just takes the nutrient, um, you know, energy load out of the tomato plant. So it's not going to be able to put on big tomatoes or continue growing. It might try to shoot out some um, elbows, some suckers. So we'll see, but that tomato plant probably will only give me what's there. So we got some onions here. Um, the pepper plants, I gave it a um, compost tea with the comfrey tea and they're doing a little better they were pretty much straight up yellow um, it's just basically you know wood chips and some old compost that probably didn't have a whole lot of nutrient left in it so they struggled a bit I might get something I might not next year I'll probably focus a little more on helping them out a bit I won't be you know planting all of this stuff here like this whole entire pond was a ton of work this year and it really the annual suffered because of it but I've established an ecosystem um, that uh, should hopefully give back more and hopefully the sacrifice will be worth it we still got some good stuff melons growing out all down the hill some more tomatoes on the side wildflower hill looking great so it's coming along Lots of nice growth on the south-facing cliff edge hill. 
tons like that's a tomato there it's one of my best tomato plants this is zucchini there let's go show you what vine borers look like so we've got a very very healthy looking zucchini plant but upon closer inspection um, that's just algae oh and a buddy so that's just algae that I put in there to build soil up but if you look at the stem you can see that something's gotten in there that's what vine borers will do and then the plant will die slowly so this plant is done I might get another couple zucchini out of it I can see a couple down in there um, also in the garden I I like to thin these out a bit it's a little too busy in there but seeing as this plant's dying already I don't want to thin it as it dies so um, I probably don't have a lot left on that zucchini it's already given me quite a bit pretty good I can't believe it did so well in this area it was very poor soil raspberry patch is fully done so I can come in and clear out the dead stuff now so this is basically what happens as soon as they go to seed and the plant thinks it did its job got its genetics out it just gives up and it's done these canes are done now and the greener canes are fresh new ones from this year and that's how the patch just keeps regenerating there's brand new canes down there so I can come in and clean these up and that'll release light for the you know the new canes to grow as much as they can before the season so as soon as you see them dying back and they got no new fruit on them you can go ahead and prune them out you can see here cuttings of the elderberry so you can see the cutting here um, I would say roughly 80% success rate with these. Some of them look like this. This may or may not survive. Not quite sure. But uh, I would say probably 80% success rate. Pretty good. Considering I haven't done anything with them. You know what? That's more than pretty good. That's pretty darn good. I'm seeing some more under here that didn't survive, I don't think anyways. This guy didn't make it. Um, but considering it was, I haven't done anything and it was a really bad year for them. That one should make it. That one should make it. This one should make it. Pretty good, I think. Hopefully next year we'll see some more growth on those. We'll see. We actually have been getting some rain. It's actually been a pretty nice last three weeks. I don't know if you guys remember this multigraft pair. This was a gift from Durham Diggs when I did my tour. And I thinned the fruit out a bit. Um, I look for stuff like this. Am I going to be able to show you? And it's a hole at the bottom of the fruit with a bunch of kind of brown dirt sticking out of it that's the frass from the actual bug so this is a coddling moth that lives inside here um, so if i'm going to selectively pick fruit out i'll selectively pick that out so i thinned them out and then this i'll just toss it somewhere maybe it'll it probably won't seed because there's it's undeveloped but uh We'll toss it there some wild animal can get a an unripe snack out of it. Now for younger trees, this is a younger apple. This is kind of about what you want in terms of fruit set. There's uh, two, three, four, five, six. Anywhere from six to 10 fruit on a tree like this. You don't want them to produce too much fruit because you do want them to focus on growing stronger. It'll pay back. Oh, I gotta go in. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. 
So I better go in. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.